Good morning, my beautiful diamonds. Today is Tuesday, March 26. Wow, April is right around the corner. Today, we are going to be focusing on Psalms chapter 11, verse 3, where it says, What would good people do if the wicked destroyed all that is good? We're going to be focusing on the importance of having a foundation. Foundations may not seem exciting, but they are very, very important. Now, Joyce Myers goes on to say, when her husband Dave, when Dave and I built our first home, we didn't invite anyone over to see the foundation. We only wanted to show them the finished house. But it turned out that we had a crack in the foundation that caused problems. Repairing it took a lot of work and extra money. We should make sure our foundations in life are strong. Our spiritual foundation can only remain strong if we spend time in God's word and time with him in prayer and fellowship on a regular basis. We should never take a vacation from this. We need, we need God's word to feed our spirit daily, just as we need food for our physical body every day. The foundation of a strong, long lasting marriage must be the word of God. Dave and I have been married since 1967. This is not because we agree about everything but because we choose to obey God's word when issues arise between us. A solid foundation and a life built on God's word will stand strong through the storms of life and give glory to God and Christ. Build your life on God's word and you'll have a life you can enjoy. Heavenly Father Yahweh Jehovah, please help me build my life on your word and always, always put you first in everything that I do. I ask this of you, Father, most respectfully, through your Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Amen. So there you have it, my darlings. The foundation is very, very important. I recall I had built a foundation. I used to be a Jehovah's Witness, and that was my foundation, the organization. And that's where I went wrong. Instead of an organization being my foundation, prayer, God's word, and fellowship with true Christians, not Pharisee like fake phony Christians, no. I needed to be with true Christians who are Christ-like and who are following Jesus Christ as their leader, not no governing body. No, we're not following that. We're going to look for people who are following Christ. Like the Bible says, if anyone is not following the teachings of Christ, don't even greet them. So that should be our foundation. That's where I went wrong. I made an organization. I made imperfect people my foundation. And trust me when I tell you when that foundation fell apart, I, it almost destroyed me. It really almost literally destroyed She the True Love. But thanks to Jehovah God through his son, Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, Jesus Christ came to my rescue immediately. Because I guess he felt that I had an honest heart, a pure heart, and I am definitely a lover of the truth. So there you have it. And you notice how Joyce Myers, her and her husband have been married, what, for what, over now 50? Joyce is 80 years old. Joyce Myers. So she came from that type of generation. You know, when marriages and people took things seriously. But you notice the reason why their marriage is successful, because when they have issues in their marriage, they go to God's word to fix the situation. But you can't do that if you're married to a man who's a heathen or a woman who's a heathen. Because Joyce was the heathen. David is the one who brought her to Christ. Check that out. So you have to be, like the Bible says, what God put together, what God has ordained, let no one pull apart. It's because then you have something to work with. My marriage is... I wasn't married to men who were uh, on Jesus Christ's team. They said they were Christians. They went to Bible study. They went to the Christian meetings. But these were men who, you know, 
you could be a Proverbs 31, but if you're married to a John chapter 8, verse 44 type of man, it's not going to work. So let God, if you still want this marriage thing, personally me, I say stay single because it's easier. First Corinthians chapter 7 says if you get married, it's okay, but if you stay single, you'll do even better. You'll do okay if you're married, but you'll do better if you stay single because you could focus more on spiritual things and you could focus more on your real husband. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 5. I am your real husband, Jesus says. But anyway, some people, they, you know, they want the marriage thing. But if that's what you insist on, allow Jesus Christ. Let God pick your partner. Because like it says, what God put together, no one should ever pull it apart. Now, all these marriages that have been put together, it's by Satan. And they should be pulled apart immediately. These are not marriages that were ordained by God and Christ. And now we're going to go for your power thought for today. This is Audible. And reap. Hold on. March 26th. Read and reap. Things are hidden temporarily only as a means to revelation. For there is nothing hidden except to be revealed. Nor is anything temporarily kept secret except in order that it may be made known. Mark 4.22 The Word has tremendous treasures powerful life-giving secrets that God wants to reveal to us. They are manifested to those who ponder, study, think about, practice mentally, and meditate on the Word of God. There is no end to what God can show you out of one verse of Scripture. You can study a Scripture one time and get one thing, and another time you'll see something else you did not even notice before. The Lord keeps revealing his secrets to those who are diligent about studying the word. Don't be the kind of person who always wants to live off someone else's revelation. Study the word yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to bless your life with truth. Power Thought Revelation is available to me when I study God's word. This power thought is very, very important to me because this is what I constantly keep trying to tell people. You know, when it comes to studying God's word, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to interpret things for you. And it's so important for you not to constantly trust someone else's interpretation or someone else's, what they say, revelation. You know, the Bible tells us to study God's word diligently. Do your own research. Don't just take the interpretation of what someone else says. You know, that's why I, you know, with the Jehovah's Witness, they want you to take their interpretation. They don't encourage you to do your own research outside of their literature. No. I want to do my own research on the Internet. I want to study what Bible scholars, historians, archaeologists, I want to do my own research. I'm not going to sit up here and let you just, uh, shove stuff down my throat and I'm just supposed to accept it. No. And that's one of the things that Jehovah's Witnesses, they try to get you not to do. They don't want you to do research. Just look at their literature. Everything is from JW.org. No, I like JW.facts. F-A-C-T-S. That's how you learn the truth about this Jehovah's Witness organization. I talk about Jehovah's Witnesses a lot because they have destroyed so many lives and they're continuing to do it, you know? And they're not humble. They do more harm than good. And, 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 and that's why I focus so much on this organization because you have a lot of organizations that are not teaching the things that are correct, but they're not destroying families, these other churches. They're not busting up families. They're not sitting up here uh, uh, killing people with no blood organ transplants, oops, oops, oops. You're destroying people. You're killing people. My, my God, they're not sitting around here molesting children and don't even apologize for it. That's why I come down on Jehovah's Witnesses so hard. But anyway, do your own research. Please do that. Remember, Jehovah loves you very much. Jesus loves you. And yes, so do I.